Well, hello and welcome, my friends. It's been quite a long time since we've done some Civil War Generals too, And I'd really like to go ahead and do the Battle of Shiloh as the Union. We did a Confederacy in the last Civil War game we played on this channel, so I think it's only fair. Uh, let's jump into the Battle of Shiloh here. If you'd like to see a longer campaign in this game, please keep in mind these are very long campaigns indeed. Uh, make sure to let us know in the comments down below and specifically what side you'd want us to play as. Now we're going to play as the Union, start setting up our forces and attacking the enemy. Now many times in this particular scenario, if you're playing as the Confederate player, you've got some pretty awesome decisions to make regarding this area. The reason being because in this particular area of the war on the border of Kentucky and Tennessee, um, there was, of course, a lot of uh, fighting between citizens that supported the Union and citizens that supported the Confederacy, much more than in other places. And I mean, you know, really just entire villages or towns, I should say, getting burned down, uh, people getting killed indiscriminately. Yeah, it was pretty rough stuff. Uh, but what we're going to do is, of course, take the fight to the rebels, try and finish them off once and for all. I bet you never thought you would see uh, General Grant and General Sherman uh, in command together, but, or, or I should say in the same uh, command um, in your lifetime, but it's going to happen here. Uh, they, of course, regularly fought together uh, and really complimented, complimented each other quite well. Now, I want to make sure that that army is really quite full. Uh, so we're actually going to also put in this general, and we've got a 7% penalty, so you know what? I'm going to leave that cavalry right there. I don't want a, even a, a small penalty um, on Grant's force. It's just not, not something we want to do. We want to make sure he's as strong as a bull, and we want to immediately move in to Gibson, Tennessee. On the offensive, Grant must remain on the offensive. Now, with a different general, it's going to be Don Carlos Bunel, we are going to lead a separate um, Union force here, and hopefully he's going to make up pretty much the secondary part of, of this, uh, this massive front. So, of course, I want to get that penalty down once again. We don't need those damn wagons, although I don't think the wagons are actually going to drop the penalty. We actually have to drop real things. So let's move Don Carlos Bunel over here. It's going to take 38 days. That's a bit too long for me. The good news is, if we go straight to Gibson to assist Sherman, we've got a railway that can get us there a lot faster. And I think that's probably a better idea. 16 days, and that's a lot more reasonable. And as for my second force, I guess we could try to get Wallace to lead a force here. Um, I've never actually tried, and as you can see, these, tr these three units together do not complement each other well. Somebody's going to have to leave, unfortunately. Uh, and even then, we get a 30% penalty, so I think we're going to actually have to separate these guys uh, and attack one by one. As for that Union detachment... So let's send Lewis Wallace down, and we're also going to send the 1st Division. They should actually be one of the first to arrive. Uh, we'll also try to get this Cavalry Division to arrive sooner rather than later. And this Kentucky Reserve Unit, as well as the Franklin Militia, is a good example of these, uh, these groups that would often rise up uh, many times without government approval from either side and just start pretty much massacring uh, opposing uh, factions. So let's go ahead and get the fight started. Best of luck to Grant, the glorious Grant here, as we move into Tennessee Territory. Looks like we've got our already a few Copperheads in our land. Look at that, a Copperhead unit of Partisans. They are definitely something I want to watch out for. Another thing I want to watch out for here is that we've got Beauregard just hanging out. And I think it's important for us to immediately move Grant down here. There's really nothing we should do with these men except keep them here on the defensive and wait and hope that Beauregard doesn't attack first. Uh, it's just that simple. Um, in fact, I hope he's not in that settlement. I don't believe he is. Uh, so I actually hope he will give battle and we can actually get a fight going. It'll certainly work out in our favor. At the same time, I'm going to take the Cumberland Fleet and get down the Cumberland River there. In fact, let's move that cavalry directly into that unit, merging with uh, un another Union detachment, and hopefully we'll just have a massive battle here 
to really settle it once and for all. Come on now. Fire! There we go. Beauregard has given the fight. Come on, boys. For the Union. Oh, baby. It looks like it's going well, but I can't tell. Oh, baby. Let's take a look. I honestly don't know if it was a victory or not. Um, so it looks like a Union defeat at the Battle of Decaturville. Almost 5,000 lost on our side, including 1,500 of our uh, cavalry units. So many rebels here. Now, we did manage to wipe out 3,145 of Beauregard's troops. And the fact is, we remain with the larger group of units uh, in this actual area. So perhaps we should remain here. And we're going to double or nothing and essentially take the Army of the Ohio on the offensive into this area. I probably should build a depot or something like that, but it just seems like with Beauregard's force fairly weak after that battle, if we can send in one more general, maybe, just maybe, we can really hurt the enemy. Um, you can see all these Copperhead forces rising up behind our lines. Not much we can do about these partisans at the moment. Let's just hope that the preceding battles go very well for us. Uh, and of course, we need to get a depot up fairly soon. Now, he might just go ahead and attack Grant. We're still waiting for him to arrive, unfortunately, our friend here. But Grant is also getting somewhat stronger. And I'm still not going on the offensive. That first battle absolutely taught us to be cautious here in the Battle of Shiloh. So I'm going to remain here outside of Beauregard's camp. Uh, and hopefully, once uh, Don Carlos Buell arrives, all of these guys are going to be able to work together to really, really hurt the enemy. Let's go for it. Come on. Actually, he's attacking us. Grant moving in again against Beauregard. Charge! 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 My goodness. What a ton of confusion, but I think we actually did win in the end. I could be wrong, but I see them pulling back. That first battle was a loss for sure. That second battle was a Union victory, um, actually managing to cause 3,748 casualties there on Beauregard's forces, enough to force him back. And since Grant had nearly 40,000 men, I think we just managed to win this one. I would still call it a Pyrrhic victory, but a victory nonetheless. Uh, and at Decatur, Tennessee, we had a Union defeat, although the uh, difference was very, very similar. It still came out for two victories for the Confederacy and only one victory for the Union, but I think we came out on top. Unfortunately, Don Carlos Bunel's command uh, has been pretty badly beaten up. Well, Grant remains fairly strong, so I am just going to keep on going here. I think these fellas can stay put. We can actually maybe even attack with McLaren and Wallace, assuming it's just Polk there. And we can retake this area. So let's do something a little crazy here. We're just going to go on the ultra offensive with these units. And I'm going to give Grant one turn to actually... I'd love to build a fort here, but I don't think we have time. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and build a supply depot. And with our units, our carpetbaggers, we're going to move down and uh, try and retake Sumner, Tennessee. Currently under military control. Go ahead and make sure we're ready to fight. The Franklin Militia are extremely loyal to the Union. Here we go, folks. Will it work? Will we have time to restructure our armies? I don't know. All right, we've got a pretty strong force here with Sherman. I mean, just look at that. Um, and, of course, we've got some uh, actual Confederate irregulars. That's not good. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to engage... Actually, I'm not going to engage the Confederate regulars. What I'm going to do is take Don Carlos Bunel's army over here. No, wait a minute. Look at that. We've not built that supply depot. We, we still are waiting for that supply depot to be built. So I'm going to make him build it. And I am going to order General Grant. We really want to face the army of the Mississippi here. But I just see a chance to take Madison, Tennessee. And I think I want to take it. So we're going to go here. And then we're going to move into Madison all on the offensive and if that's an easy grab well then i'll be very very happy i'll move these boys over here to try to retake uh, that area gibson county 
and looks like we took the city back Sumner without any issues let's move into Smith and then into Rutherford and of course there's a rail yard there quite a few uh, different ways you can go so I think it's important to retake that area quickly now Bernal you better build that damn fort or we're gonna have, or excuse, I should say supply depot we're gonna have to give you a court martial there we go I think an easy victory for Grant right there the Confederates simply aren't giving battle so of course it's an easy victory let's take a look here 450 enemy killed yeah not surprising but if the Confederates don't give battle then of course we can't secure victory let's take a look here at the victory point so we're holding the victory point of Nashville and they are holding the victory point of Corinth so what we want to do now an all-out attack with General Grant into Corinth it's the right thing to do boys and girls and we'll also try and get Burnell there on a timely manner as well. The man seems incapable of building a damn rail yard, or I should say a damn supply depot. He's not going to move any faster by rail, so you know what, we'll keep him here to uh, hopefully eventually build that depot. But I am going to move uh, the 3rd Division down here, just to make sure the Confederates don't try to outflank us uh, from this direction at least. And in fact, I'll try to move them over here eventually. Well, best of luck to Grant and best of luck to the Yankee cause. We really do need some right now. Another thing I'm going to do... Oh, sorry, we're already doing that. Uh, is take those those uh, those towns across the river. Although Nashville is really what's important. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and move into Nashville uh, and defend it. The rest is just kind of irrelevant. Nashville is the region capital. Here we go. Fire! Fire! It's only 5,000 men, damn you. And here we go. Now he's giving us battle. Okay. Hey, we took the city. We lost the first battle. It looks like we had a huge Confederate force there. We didn't realize. But we won the Battle of Corinth uh, against Johnston without a single man lost. Now that's exciting. Um, and over here we won once again with only 184 men lost. So just stacking up the bodies at Corinth. Uh, and once again, another victory here at Corinth, uh, this time 799 men lost, but taking the city, I believe, ensures victory as long as we don't lose other cities. Uh, although, of course, it's not looking good over here, I must admit, uh, in Decatur. Um, so we're going to immediately move Grant up here. He's not going to get back in time, I highly doubt it. Um, nonetheless, we've done okay at this point, we just kind of ha kind of have to leave some men here uh, to defend. Oh, that could have been an encounter nearly. And it's going to be a minor victory. So I got the feeling since we took Decatur, that's the only reason we won this battle. It helps to play Ajiots a little bit more, a little bit before you're, you play the battles. Because again, that's the most important thing, not the body count, even though the body count is nice. And in fact, we want to take a look and see, did we lose more men than the, than the Southerners did? We'll have to check here. We'll go ahead. Look at the objectives, and it looks like we lost 25,314 men. We took nearly 5,000 Confederate prisoners, however. Uh, the Confederacy losing 20,461 men. Uh, and I think we, we came out of, on top, uh, really, because of Corinth. Had we not managed to take that with good old General Grant, we would have not had a victory here at Shiloh. Well, thank you again for watching, guys. And once again, if you enjoyed this series and you want to see a long campaign, let me know in the comments down below and let me know specifically what side you want me to play as. And uh, once again, hit that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. Another thing I would ask you to do is we've really noticed here on the channel that uh, people, especially on the live streams, have been saying, my goodness, I didn't even know you still had a channel. That's why you really have to hit that bell button um, next to the subscribe button, and this will sort of notify you anytime I'm uploading a video. Thanks again, guys. Catch you on the next one.